Hey everybody, welcome to another video. I'm Mike B, and also welcome to my kitchen. I know, very state-of-the-art, very fancy, very uh, well-equipped. Um, it'll have to do for now. Um, so, as you might know, or you might not know if you're new to the channel, uh, my, my channel mainly focuses on topics to do with history, um, military surplus firearms, military history in general, and um, that's all fine and dandy, but once in a while I kind of like to do things a little bit off the cuff. And this has been requested by many people in live streams and in comments over the years, well, the past couple of year, years in specific. And I'm finally going to do it. So it's going to be called Cooking with Mike B, and this is going to be the first episode in the series. And today we're going to be making Russian meatballs. That's why I've got this on to kind of keep with the theme of the channel. But this is something that I, I really like to do is cooking. And I won't, most of the intro to the next videos might not be this long. I just wanted to kind of lay the groundwork at the, the base episode, episode one, is I like cooking. I've always liked cooking. Um, I've been encouraged to cook my entire life by my grandmother, my mother, and other people. And I think it's a really cool thing to do. It's really fun. It's very rewarding. Obviously, everybody has to eat. Um, it just seems that cooking is becoming kind of a lost skill. A lot of people just rely on either takeout or boiling noodles, which they think is cooking. It's not. Um, cooking is not as difficult as you might think either, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show that. If I can do it, pretty much anybody can. Uh, as long as you follow a recipe and you kind of know what to do and what not to do. If you're new to cooking, you should probably follow the recipe. But if not, you can kind of tweak things here and there. And that's what makes it fun, right? So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to try to not be, make a terrible dumpster fire of a video with the camera work. Um, I'm going to be making the Russian meatballs, and I'm going to go through how the recipe says to do it. I'll post a link to the recipe in the description that I'm following, so you can go try and make it. I encourage you to learn how to cook um, and just take a risk. If you mess it up, you mess it up. Just like anything else, just keep trying over again and eventually you'll get it. And it's really fun and really rewarding. So I think we'll get started. I'll just kind of walk you through. I've never done a cooking video before, so this is going to be my first one ever. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get going. So probably the most time consuming, but also most important part of cooking I've found is prep. Um, I'm not a chef. I'm not even a cook. I've never had any formal training or anything like that. But anybody that has will tell you that prep is... Probably the most important because it can make or break your um, dish. You can spend hours um, making a dish and if you didn't prep right, it all falls apart in the end. So with this recipe, if you want to follow along a little bit, you want to pull it up another window, um, you can or you don't really have to. We're going to go through just the ingredients really quick and I got the list pulled up. So for the meatballs, what we're going to need is a half a pound of what they, what they say minced veal, but I'm just using um, lean ground beef and a half a pound of minced pork, so ground pork. So it'll be a pound total. And then we're gonna need a third of a cup of sushi rice cooked. We're gonna need two eggs. And then for the sauce, we're gonna need two carrots um, shredded, two small carrots shredded, two small onions chopped, but I'm just gonna use a big onion in place of uh, two smaller ones. We're gonna need two tablespoons of spicy tomato paste. Since I don't have spicy tomato paste and it's sold out everywhere, we're just gonna have to use regular tomato paste. Where you need, they use a pound of tomato puree. That's a 15 ounce can of sauce. I'm just going to add a little bit more tomato paste in there to thicken it up and do a puree. And then we're actually going to have a full pound of um, tomato puree at that point. And I'll explain that when I do that. Uh, tablespoon of butter, we got right there. A teaspoon of sugar, we got our sugar right there. Aleppo pepper, which is probably the most um, important ingredient that I had to wait on. I've never used this before, but it smells amazing. It's something that's used in the Middle East uh, and Syria and Turkey a lot. And it is also used in a lot of Russian cooking, apparently. So we'll do that. We got kosher salt and we got vegetable oil, but I, I like avocado oil for basically everything. So that's what you're going to see me use a lot. So we've got all of our ingredients lined up. Now, for the actual cook cookware, I've got, you don't really need to do this. They say you use a... a shallow Dutch oven, which this is a regular Dutch oven, or a saucepan, or, you know, large medium saucepan, which is basically a pan with high sides on it. Um, I choose to use this because I really like the way Le Creuset handle. It's very expensive, but it's enamel covered iron and it cooks really well really evenly. So we're just going to be using that and I'll definitely show you in there. And then we're also going to need, because I looked ahead at the directions, the instructions, we're also going to need a separate little pan for frying some stuff. So... We are going to start this. I will just kind of go step by step. Maybe I'll be on camera, maybe I won't. I want to figure this out. What I'm going to do first, though, is when you go through this list, what is going to take the longest time and what can, you know, what can sit out for a little bit first? What is going to take the longest time to cook? Well, the sushi rice is going to have to be put in the pressure cooker, or the instant pot, rather. 
and that's going to probably take about 10 minutes to do that. So I'm going to actually start with the rice. I'm going to put a third of um, uncooked rice in there just so I have a little bit of extra later. And I love sushi rice. I love any kind of rice. So it never hurts to have some extra, but I'm going to put a third of a cup in there. If you wanted to do a third of a cup cooked, it would be, I think, a sixth of a cup. It's around there usually. Rice expands to about twice the size of itself when you cook it. Just kind of use that as a rule. Some are more, some are, some are less, but I found that to be close enough. So I'm definitely just going to make a third of a cup. And um, yeah, so I'm going to start with that. And then I'm going to cut the onion because that's going to take a little bit of time. And then we'll go on from there. So the first thing you want to do is we're going to just set this little... I don't know what this is called, a strainer or something. It's a plastic thing, you can use a metal one too. And we're gonna measure out our rice. So it's just under a third of a cup. And with rice, you're gonna wanna rinse it before you actually use it. Otherwise it's gonna get so incredibly kind of gooey and um, not the sticky that you want. So I'm just gonna run this. You wanna run it until the water underneath there is completely clear. Um, I know sushi rice is made to be super sticky, but it's also made to be, um, I don't know how to describe it, where it's it's still, they're not all just kind of mushed together, they're still individual grains, if you know what I mean. If you ever had rice, it's more like a porridge than, you know, individual grains. That's not very helpful, especially when you're using this as a binder in meat. So, yep, we're going to keep going until that water is not cloudy anymore. Okay, so now we're to the point where the water is just about completely clear. And we're gonna call that good. Now we're gonna go over and put it in the Instant Pot. All right, so just dump it in there, make sure it's all in there. And you're gonna wanna add about a two to one ratio. Uh, so we used a third of a cup of rice, you're gonna wanna use about a two to one ratio. I like the rice a little bit more al dente. But um, usually, just to eat, but since this is going to be a binder, we're going to kind of want it to be a little bit more soft. So I'm actually going to use um, two-thirds of a cup of water. Both of these are a little bit short, so I'm just going to get a little bit more. There. That should be good. All right, so we'll chuck it in the Instant Pot. Make sure all the grains are down on the sides into the water. I don't think it really matters that much, but... All right, throw this puppy on, seal it up, and we are going to hit the rice option, which is great. So that'll uh, make sure your valve is closed on the top. <laughs> it's always something that I forget, the valve up there. If it's open like that, it'll just sit there and, and it'll get hot, but it won't actually seal and start pressure cooking, so make sure that's closed. All right, <clears throat> we'll start on the main part of it. Actually, we'll start on the sauce. All right, so I read the recipe again, and actually they said, you know, two small onions chopped for the sauce, but actually one of the small onions is gonna be going into the meatballs, which I, that's why I kind of double checked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop up the big one because I personally like more onions in tomato sauce. Um, it's, again, if you wanna follow the recipe, if you're not a big fan of onions, you can put less or more, but I'm, I know for a fact that this is actually not gonna make a, a bad difference, it'll be better because um, onions are fantastic. So I'm gonna cut this guy up right now. Okay, again, I'm not really making these videos to teach you techniques and whatever, because again, I'm not a chef. Uh, I'm just gonna show you how I do it normally. Um, everybody's got their own way to to cook and cut things and whatever. I'll just do this. Okay, so that's looking really good. Um, when, you, when they say finely chopped onions or chopped onions, you can make, make the chunks as big or small as you want. When we go to cook these though, they will be shrinking. So if you like bigger chunks of onions in your sauce, make them you know, a little bit bigger to each their own. 
So for this next step, if you're reading along, if you're not, it says uh, heat some oil in a wide-sided saute pan or Dutch oven over medium heat. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, get, the, get the burner going on medium heat. Uh, cooking with gas is always better than cooking with electric. So if you're new to cooking, um, it's very difficult to cook, especially when you're new, with electric because it's so um, there's such a delay in the heat. If I were, if, so if I'm a medium heat right now and I want to crank it up and make, bring something to a boil that's not quite boiling, it's just simmering, I can turn that knob and immediately it's going to start boiling. If you do that on electric, it's going to take a little bit. And the same is true in reverse. If you're starting to burn something and you, you need to remove it from the heat, but then you can't take the pan up because you have to keep stirring it like a roux or something. Gas heat, you can just pop the, the heat way down and it's an immediate response. So uh, this is cooking. I'm not just talking, so we're actually getting something done. Yeah, I usually wait until the pan has got a little bit of heat going before I put the oil in. Just, I don't know why I do that. There's probably a reason I was taught that I just can't remember. So, uh, this stuff does, the uh, Le Creuset takes a little bit to heat up because it is so heavy. This thing weighs with the lid 16 and a half pounds. It's also a, what is this, a seven or eight quart, um, or no, this is like seven, yeah, something like that, eight quarts. So, it's a pretty big pot. Um, I figured, you know, gonna spend that kind of money, might as well get something that I can cook everything in, big or small. So, there we go. All right, we're gonna just add some oil. It doesn't say how much, or maybe it does, but again, you can tell this person cooks because when we get further down, there's things that are not really specific. And that's the thing, when you're baking, like you're making a cake or whatever, you need to be very precise with the measurements. There's no room to kind of flub it because baking is a chemical reaction more than applying heat to food, is the way I put it. Uh, there's more to it, obviously, and that's more complicated, but all right, so we'll get this kind of moving around. And the reason I like avocado oil is it's got a super high smoke point, which means that it, it can get up to like almost 500 degrees or around 500 degrees, so you can really get a good sear on things. We're not using it in that capacity right here, but that's another reason I like avocado oil. And it tastes pretty neutral and good. So we'll heat this up, and we'll, we'll wait until... Uh, let's get a little bit warm. But our next step is to add the um, carrots and the onion. But we'll, we'll let that heat up for a little bit. Okay, so a couple minutes has passed and the pan is uh, fairly hot. Yep. So make sure you try not to waste anything. I love using these kind of spatulas too because they, especially when you're making a sauce or something, it's really easy to stir it and make sure you don't miss anything on the sides of the pot or the pan. Um, again, it's personal preference. My way is not the right way. It's the way I do it. So it says to cook for five minutes until softened. So I will cook this for five minutes until softened. So while that's cooking, I'm going to want to start actually prepping for the meatballs. So it says I need to chop a small onion, which I'm going to do. And then I need to saute it in a pan, which is why we have that other pan. Oh, nasty little thing. We can cut that out though. Not a big deal. See, we're good to go. people that uh, onions make me uh, cry a little bit it hurts I know I'm not cutting them the right way you're supposed to cut with the uh, like with the cells and you usually don't get that but I don't know some people just don't react to onions but it just feels like I got pepper sprayed all right we're gonna we're gonna push through this I've got the uh, pan going I'm gonna put it on high heat because we're gonna want to saute these so they're quickly cooked and soft enough to be um, molded into being used as a part of the meatball. Yeah, also, if you're new to cooking, don't ever do this on the blade. That's why I'm going down and I'm not putting any pressure on it. You can also go on the cutting board itself and wipe the, the thing off. And also, if you're going to be using the cutting board, or I'll just demonstrate it. 
to um, you know put stuff into the pan directly. Don't ever use the blade side of the knife, always use the back of the knife. So here's what we got cooking on the stove right now. We got these are caramelizing really nice. When you cook onions, when you saute them, which is just a fancy word for cooking in oil, without, you know, it's not deep frying, it's cooking in oil. You saute onions and you heat them up, they actually, all the sugars, which there's a lot in onions, believe it or not, all the sugars start coming out and they start actually caramelizing, which is what you want, because it brings out that rich, sweet flavor, but still you got the tang of the onions, so. All right, stir that really quick. And then, here's what I'm talking about with the, uh, with anything. Don't use the, uh, don't use the blade, just use the back of the knife. Oh, I'm getting it all over the stove because this is an awkward angle. Sorry my camera works probably really crappy, guys, but someday I'll probably, probably get it down a little bit better. There. So cool. Knife's cleaned off. Pretty neat. So now, I keep stirring these guys for about five minutes, right? Medium heat. Looking like I might need to add a little bit more oil. I didn't specify how much, which is just fine. Just use your eyes. Um, here's what it looks like. It's getting a little bit, a little bit dry in there. There's no oil in the bottom. There's barely any on the uh, onions or the carrots. So I'm just gonna put a little, little dash in there. Probably about three quarters of a tablespoon. All right, so that's, that's looking a lot better with the oil. Look at this, yeah. Love the smell of fried, frying onions. It's just so good, filling the house up already. It already smells amazing in here. All right, we're gonna let them cook and we're gonna go back to doing the meatballs. Actually, I lied, we're gonna keep going on the sauce. Um, so at this point it says add two tablespoons of tomato paste. Oh, it's a little bit more, but I said I was gonna add a little bit more, plus it sticks in there quite a bit. So there's that. There we go. And then we're gonna just kind of scoop this out with the spatula. That's another reason I like these. So let me just do this. There's approximately like two and a half tablespoons in there. And then it says to just stir the uh, paste in, which is pretty typical if you want a nice, rich, bold flavor to meld with all the uh, vegetables in here. We do this a lot in Indian cooking. So it says to add a little bit more oil if the skillet starts getting dry, so we're gonna do that. This is fine if you're making a sauce, it's not, and this is why it pays to actually have a decent set of cookware. I'm not tooting my own horn, I cooked with like Walmart stuff made in China for my whole life until this year, and this thing's awesome. But we seal the sauce, it's gonna actually soak up all that stuff on the bottom. So speaking of that, we're gonna pour the puree or the sauce in at this point. You hear it sizzling, it's a good sign. We're still on medium heat. Yeah, look at that. Damn, those are really starting to look good. I've never made this recipe before, if, if, I, if I didn't mention that already. I've never made this before, so it's gonna be, that's why the timing was kind of off, I said I needed to do the meatballs, but oh, I need to stir these. Onions. See, cooking is pretty involved, but it's really fun if you have, uh, if you have ADHD or you're, like multitasking or switching in between tasks. It's really fun. So I'm just stirring up the onions. They're caramelizing very well. So, yeah, look at that. These are actually going in the um, in the meatballs. So these are going to be absolutely delicious. I throw a little bit more oil on them. 
just to make sure. Look at that. It'll be great on a cheeseburger. I feel like rings better. Caramelized rings, but I mean these are God, these are gonna be good. Flatten it out. I have these cooking on medium high heat, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's right in between medium and high. You don't want to actually when you're sauteing something, if you're just sauteing something, you can have it on high heat as long as you're stirring it quite frequently. But I found that if you or switching in between tasks like we're doing with this sauce that it's easy to burn them and you don't want to burn them when you saute them. I'm borderline on a couple of those. We just wanted to turn this nice golden color. All right, so now in the sauce it says, so it says I need to season with salt and this Aleppo pepper. So we're just going to be using kosher salt. I love kosher salt. It's fantastic. So kosher salt is going to be this nice coarse salt that's just fantastic. Um, it's really good stuff. It's a little bit different than table salt. It's a little bit less harsh. And I like it for cooking. So, uh, And it doesn't specify how much. So we're just going to actually put in about uh, a little bit more than that. So it'll be about, about a tablespoon, it looks like. I know I'm horrible and I'm not following instructions, but this is how I was taught to cook. Um, <laughs> believe it or not. And then it's the same with the Aleppo pepper. It says season to taste. So we're going to put this in, let it cook for a few minutes, then we'll come back to it. We'll go ahead and turn the heat off of the onions. So... Ah, this stuff smells great. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. So yeah, I'll do about a... We'll start out with... Yeah, about that much. You can always add more. You can't take it out. Once it's in, it's in. That's a really important thing to remember. So we'll just start with that because that looks like a decent amount to be putting into a sauce. You can always add more. We'll stir that up. And we're going to let this simmer for a few minutes while we get back to the meatballs or get to the meatballs rather we haven't even started those yet but oh man look at that see how that stuff's coming out of the bottom already it'll be it'll be gone by the time we're done cooking so there's just a little bit of it left but yeah damn it's already smelling great too all right we'll let this cook and we'll get going on the meatballs okay this next part's gonna be fun it's always fun mixing up meat um it says you can use one or two eggs i'm gonna use I'm going to use one to start and we'll see where we're at uh, with consistency and the, the egg is just acting as a binder when you cook it. So, all right. Then we're going to add in the onions that are lovely and caramelized as you can see. Look at that. Some of them got a little roasty toasty, but it's, it'll still be fine. That's looking really good. It's smelling amazing in here. And then we're going to put in the rice, which we've got a third of a cup of really nice, well done sushi rice. It's really sticky. It's going to be a great binder and it's going to taste really good. Uh, that's what differentiates Russian meatballs apparently from other meatballs like Italian and stuff. They use, they use rice to bind it instead of breadcrumbs, which is awesome. So, and then it says season with salt and pepper. I assume they mean the Aleppo pepper. So we'll start out with just a little, little dash like that. Yeah, we should be all right. I'll just throw that on there. It's just, I, that's barely even a, probably a quarter teaspoon. And then we'll do the same in salt, about a quarter teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. And now, if you've never done this before, you have to do this. It's so easy to do this, but it's also really gross and you're definitely gonna have to wash your hands after this. Just get right in there with your hands and mix it all up. Yep. So it's actually a little bit too thin. I don't think it's going to hold together that well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit more of uh, lean ground beef. Okay, I'm just going to probably add about another quarter pound or so. And uh, this will thicken it up a bit. It'll soak up some of the egg. I'm going to put a little bit more salt and pepper in there. And one thing I forgot to mention is when I said the sauce was done, it wasn't. I, I forgot the uh, teaspoon of um, sugar and the tablespoon of butter, which is now in the sauce. So we're going to let that simmer. And we're going to keep stirring. Okay, so now it says to make uh, make a little patty and fry it in the pan. So we're going to do that. It says to do that to check the seasoning. So we'll make a little patty. Yeah, it's holding together a lot better now. And we'll actually throw it in here. 
and then put this back on the stove. All right, so got a little patty on the stove and the uh, skillet that we use to caramelize the onions. Got it on high heat. I'm just gonna cook it like a little hamburger patty, a little sausage patty. All right, now that you just probably wasted, you know, a minute or two of your life watching a piece of meat cook, I've turned the heat off and flipped it. I just want to make sure it's cooked. And we're just going to take a bite right out of the pan. Yep. Yep, needs more salt and pepper. So we're going to be back to mixing this in with our grubby little, grubby little hands. It tasted fine. I just, I personally like more salt and pepper. That's why they said salt and pepper, you know, adjust if you need and salt and pepper to taste. I love it when recipes say that because it's uh, pretty easy. But yeah, I, I get it. If you're new, if you're new to cooking, it's, it helps to just have an exact measurement. But um, if it does say salt to taste, like I said, start out small. You can always add more. You can't take it out. And also, this really isn't like me telling you how to cook and like giving you an instructional video. You just, uh, a lot of you just wanted to see how I cook and it's pretty standard. And I've been trying a lot of recipes, like foreign recipes lately, because it's more interesting to cook than a lot of the regular American stuff like meat and potatoes and whatnot. Um, so yeah, so it says roll them into about two inch meatballs. So I'll be a little bit gratuitous with that. And place them in the sauce. So we'll get that done. All right, so we ended up with six good-sized meatballs and a little bit smaller one, so a total of seven. Actually, those two are about the same size, so maybe I just got bigger. I don't know. I'm not very consistent when it comes to this kind of stuff. So now I'm going to go wash my hands, and then we're going to ladle the tomato sauce over the meatballs, cover it, let it sit for 20 minutes, and cook on medium heat. And here we sit. Now, whenever you're waiting for something to cook for an X amount of time, like 20 minutes is a long time, do yourself a favor and start cleaning up the kitchen. You'll thank yourself later. All right, it has been about 25 minutes. I gave it a little bit extra because these do have pork in them. You always want to make sure that pork is cooked completely thoroughly because I get paranoid about that. So anyway, let's check it out. Oh yeah, look at that. Let's see if this makes it any better. There we go. Yeah, I mean, the lighting isn't ideal, I guess. But yeah, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Oh yeah, look at that. Give me a little brown on one of them. Look at those. Ah, burned a little bit on the bottom, but it's to be expected. It's actually not breaking up into the sauce. Anyway, I, I screwed that up. It must have had the heat a little bit too high, even though it was on medium. But all right, we'll dish this up and see how it tastes. This is going to probably be one of the best plating videos ever made, just letting you know. So I think I'm, uh, I think I'm going to do three to start out with. Sounds about right. I'm kind of hungry. So I said do this and then garnish with Parmesan cheese, which we'll do in a little bit. Fresh grated is always better, but um, 
I actually don't have any on hand, so we're just gonna have to use this. And they say you can also use parsley flakes as a garnish. I'm not a big fan of parsley, to be honest with you, so we're gonna skip that part. All right, now let's get to it. All right, so here we are at the final stretch. We're gonna actually go ahead and try this out. I've got my uh, better half uh, here, and we're gonna take a bite. So, does it smell good at least? Mm -hmm. All right. Are there like caramelized onions in the sauce? Yep, in the sauce and in the meatballs. What do you think of the carrots in the sauce? Isn't that weird? I've never had that before. Yeah, I mean, it's just good. That's all I can describe it as, is just good. Yeah, I like it. It's like sweet, very sweet and savory. The sauce and everything with the carrots. Mm -hmm. Awesome, well, you don't have to sit here and watch us devour the rest of this stuff. Um, thank you for watching my first uh, Cooking with Mike B video, I guess. Hopefully this is what you guys were looking for. Um, even if it wasn't, it was still fun to make. It's a little bit different cooking when you got a camera around. I had to constantly try to set up stuff and got off of the timing, whatever. But anyway, I'll work through that. We'll improve. Let me know what you think. If you want more of these, I'll keep cooking and uh, making videos. So hopefully you might have learned something. Again, it's not really an instructional video. It's just cooking with Mike B. So uh, thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel, uh, you can do that from Patreon or you can become a YouTube channel member. Or, yeah, member. Or follow me on Instagram. Yeah, follow me at Mike's Military US. Mike's underscore Military Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. See you later. No, I know. She always complains about the long-winded outros. But yeah, Patreon helps for other stuff. Right. Can I just get this done? We're already been done right now. Three, so, so um, yeah, Patreon really helps support. So does the uh, channel memberships and all that stuff. Doing, like, ballistic tests and whatever. This is not really going to be funded by Patreon. But, I mean, let's be real. It might. It might. Yeah, maybe I could get really expensive stuff. Get some saffron, like some paella or something. Um, anyway. So yeah, check that out. We'll be doing more ballistic tests pretty soon. Um, hopefully some body armor ones too, by the way. So yeah, again, thanks for watching. It's only three times. And if you can't support the channel financially, that's totally fine. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next video.